Tadgecoat gasped in amazement. Oh, a fairy, she said, but I've never seen a real one before. Hello, Tadgecoat, said the fairy. I'm not just any fairy, Tadgecoat. I am your fairy godmother. Oh my goodness, said Tadgecoat. I didn't even know I had a fairy godmother. That's amazing. I know, she said, and I am here to tell you that Tattercuts, you shall go to the ball. But how am I going to go to the ball, said Tattercuts. I don't even have a dress to go in. I don't even have shoes to go in. I've just got this horrible bunch of rags I have to wear all the time. Well, said the fairy, do you know I've been keeping an eye on you for years and years since you've been a baby. And I wanted to make sure that if this ever happened, after your mother died, I would be ready. So all you need to do is close your eyes and let me do the rest. Tadakos closed her eyes and she could hear a sort of buzzing all the way around her. What's going on? She said. Don't worry, said the fairy, I've got this all sorted. She could feel something beautiful wrapping around her a big soft material and silken skirt and she could suddenly feel something on her feet and when she opened her eyes she looked down and she had the most beautiful dress on it was as blue as the sky covered in sparkling jewels with all sorts of velvet running down it it was so beautiful it almost looked like a moving river the material was that soft and sparkly. She had gorgeous sparkly shoes on and on her wrist was a beautiful blue sparkling bracelet. Now that's not the end of it, said her godmother. If you look outside, I have done very special things with your shire horse. What do you mean Brian, your shire horse outside? He's but he can barely walk, he's so old. Oh, look outside now. She looks outside, and there, in the place of Brian the Shire Horse, was a gleaming white pony. That will be your lift to the ball tonight, my dear, said the fairy. But you've got to promise me one thing. Anything, said Tattercoats. I'm so excited to go. I will do anything you ask. You must be back by midnight, said the fairy. My magic will only last for that long. I can't promise what will happen if you come back later. I promise, I promise, thank you so much, said Tattercoats. And on she got to the pony, the beautiful glimmering white pony, and rode towards the party. Meanwhile, at the party, the two sisters were there, having a rubbish time because that's the kind of thing they did. All they did was stand in the corner and say how rubbish everybody else's outfits were and say how bored they were. Uh, oh, can you believe her dress? said the tall one. Isn't it absolutely disgusting? Yes, said the short one. I can't even believe she'd wear that. She just looks like some sort of toilet roll holder. Oh. <laughs> they were really, really mean to everybody. But suddenly, the taller one got her sister to shh. Be quiet, be quiet, she said. I think I can see the king of the gypsies. And sure enough, they looked down the room and there was the king of the gypsies gleaming in a large golden gown and looking absolutely amazing. He had a whole troop of gypsies with him too. Some of them were playing music, some of them were juggling, some of them were walking on stilts, and some of them were performing amazing magic tricks where they appeared and disappeared all at the same time. Everybody was absolutely amazed. It was the most incredible thing they'd seen in years. And from behind him, his son appeared. Now, the Gypsy King's son wasn't really like his dad very much. Where the Gypsy King was big and bold, his son was quite quiet and a bit shy. He was very nice, but he didn't always know how to speak to people in public. 
The son had never been to a party so big before, so he didn't really know what to do. He was a little bit nervous. His father, on the other hand, was having an absolute whale of a time, although he could tell his son was a bit shy. <sighs> and he always thought he had to do things like this and kind of gee his son along a bit. His father, on the other hand, was being the life and soul of the party. And when he realised that his son really wasn't joining in, he rolled his eyes and went over to talk to him. Oh, come on, lad, he said. You know what it's like in these parties. You've got to get involved. I can't have you standing in the corner not talking to anybody. What will people think of the Gypsy King if his son is standing in the corner like a piece of wood? I know, Father, said the son. The thing is, though, there's a lot of people here. I, I don't know how to talk to them. Oh, it's fine, he said. Just grab one of the girls and have a dance with them. Come on, Xavi, you could do it. But the son wasn't really very sure. So he went off to talk to some of the girls. But to be honest with you, he didn't find them very interesting. All they seemed to do was talk about how great his dad was, how rich he was, and their dresses. It wasn't very interesting for him. Just as he thought maybe he'd try and slip out the back and just go home, he suddenly turned around to see a beautiful, mysterious girl enter the room. When the doors opened, everyone in the party turned around and gasped. <gasps> the girl who stepped inside looked like a fairy tale come true. Her beautiful dress shining like a river, her sparkling shoes like diamonds on the floor, her bracelet and her beautiful face. In fact, she looked so different that not even Tattercoat's sisters recognised her. Instead, they just stood in the corner watching her with their judgy faces on. Mm. Who's that? said the taller one. Don't know, I've never seen her before, said the short one. But I don't think she looks anywhere near as good as we do. Oh no, said the taller one. She looks absolutely nowhere near as good as ours. But they knew that they were lying to each other. For as soon as Tesco's walked in, every single eye was on her. And not just because she was so beautiful, but because everybody could see from her glowing skin what a fantastic person she was. You could just tell by her smile that she had a very good heart. And as we said earlier, that's what makes you the most beautiful person of all.